Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and welcome to my Q&A session for Tuesday the 5th of October 2010. Now in this video I'm going to be answering some questions that I received through my Geekanoids iPhone app and also questions that were posted in my Q&A session on the 28th of September 2010. Now before I get on with the questions I've just got two quick shout outs to do and then a couple of other little announcements but first the, the shout outs. The first one is for It's Me Maverick Blue, you can see his channel on the screen as I'm speaking and on this channel there is some fantastic content, really good unboxings and reviews, you can see one of the MacBook White happening as I'm speaking and if I just scroll down some of the other ones we've got Blackberry Curve, Halo Reach Limited Collectors Edition, Geometry Wars App of the Week, uh, Switch Easy Nude Blue which is a case, uh, plenty of great content so please do check out it's me, Maverick Blue's channel. Second shout out is to Lockwood Katie. Now, I've been watching Lockwood Katie's channel for a long time. There is some absolutely fantastic video footage on here. Uh, lots of unboxings, lots of, lots of reviews, lots of opinion as well. Uh, really, really great. The one I like that I watched the other day, if I just scroll down some of the content here, is, bear with me, here we go. We've got an unboxing of the uh, Monster Beats by Dr. Dre. These are the studio edition headphones. So well worth heading over to Lockwood Katie's channel and watching some of the great video content on there. Now I've got two more quick pieces of news for you before I get on with answering your questions. The first one is regarding the HTC Desire HD. This is a brand new Android based mobile phone. 4.3 inch screen and a 1 gigahertz processor. You can see it on the screen as I'm speaking. Really nice looking handset. And it also has HD video capture capability and a really high resolution camera with a dual LED flash. Really glorious looking screen. And I'm hoping to be bringing you my coverage of this phone starting this week. I'm expecting it to arrive with me around about Wednesday. So I'll be doing an unboxing and product tour and plenty of videos covering all of the features of this new HTC phone. Last bit for you to cover off before we get on with the Q&A session is the Geekanoids website. I did a very slight redesign on it and I added a couple of things. The first thing I want to show you is I added some uh, social networking buttons. You can see on the screen my arrow is showing you the Facebook like button and also the tweet button so you can share my reviews and videos via Facebook or Twitter. So please do uh, use those buttons if you can. Another thing I just want to shout out to you about is that I do welcome your views and subscriptions, obviously. I also welcome some of the donations I receive, and I added some extra buttons in on the website. And these buttons here allow you to support the Geekanoids website. There's one where you can actually donate £2 a month recurring, or £5 a month, £10 a month, or make a one-time contribution. Now, I'm not saying you have to, because all of my content's free, but if you do feel... Uh, the urge to share some love for the Geek and Noise channel and some support, then please do click on one of those buttons and make a donation. So now let's get on with the Q&A session for the 5th of October 2010. So the first question is from Shuedi. I have some questions, two in fact. First one is, what do you think about the pictures of the iMac Touch? Do you think we can already see a huge 27-inch iMac Touch next year? And the second question do you think Apple is going to redesign the iPod dock in the near future? Well, the first one regarding the uh, iMac Touch. Yeah, I do think that Apple are looking at building uh, touch uh, f features into the iMac. I think they're going to release either a 21 and a half inch or 27 inch uh, fully touch sensitive screen. I'm not a great fan of it myself because I couldn't think of anything worse than reaching forward and touching my iMac screen and then sitting back and doing serious work on it with all of the fingerprints that are going to come with touching the screen. Maybe they launch a slightly separate line, uh, something like a, a, just a 21 and a half inch and, and call it the iMac Touch and keep it completely separate to the standard iMacs and give people that choice. I think that would be a much wiser idea from Apple. The iPod dock redesign, well, I think they're only going to redesign the iPod dock if they launch new iPods. And as we know, the iPod lineup has already been 
uh, redesigned uh, just recently, so I don't see them doing that anytime soon. Next question is from Everything Tech 1020. I've already actually answered this one in the comments because it was a very quick answer. Which case do I recommend for the iPhone 4? There are lots of cases out there. I love Griffin Technology cases and Spec products and Pro Porter. And my favourite one at the moment is the Pro Porter Mitsu shell for the iPhone 4. Really nice uh, case. And it's either already on my channel as a review or coming up very soon. Next question comes from uh, da, 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 from the iPodist. Hi Dave, I was wondering what microphone you use. Not an internal mic, but do you have a mic that I solely use for sound recording? Well, I'm going to be honest with you here. For the majority of the time, I use the built-in microphone on the iMac. I find it perfectly sufficient for doing the Q&A sessions and a lot of my, my videos. When I'm actually recording the reviews, I use the built-in mic on my Panasonic uh, HDC SD700 and I find that perfectly adequate as well. When sound quality is really important to me, I use an Audio Technica AT2020. A very nice uh, condenser microphone. It's got an XLR connection on one end, goes into a mixing desk, uh, which is an Alesis Multimix USB 2. Um, they do also do a USB version as well, which I'm hoping to bring you a review of very soon. So, great question. Next question comes from uh, the Robio Man. Hello, Dave. How do you get onto the YouTube Partner Program? Well, Sharpie Got Tech has already did say you need to have a set amount of subscribers and viewers, which is perfectly correct. And to get onto the program, if you search YouTube Help for YouTube Partner Support, it will lead you to a page where you can actually apply for the partnership program. When you go to apply, it gives you an indication straight away whether or not you'll be approved. It will say, yep, yeah, you're going to be approved, or no, it looks unlikely, but you can apply anyway. If you don't get approved, you do have to wait two months before you can apply again. So my advice is to wait until you've built up at least sort of a thousand, maybe two thousand subscribers, and make sure you upload content regularly and it's very um, sort of professional and not a lot of this swearing and all the slang words and everything but just make it very interesting to the viewer and I'm sure that if you gain the popularity on YouTube then you've got a good possibility of being approved for the YouTube Partnership Programme. I have also heard that even if you're not a member of the YouTube Partnership Programme you can be invited in just to uh, revenue share on specific videos so if you produce a really good video and YouTube get to know about it then they will contact you and off offer you some revenue share options on that video. Next question comes from iAppleSwim. I know you love Macs but say you had only £700 to spend on a mid to high spec PC what would you recommend? PC tower, monitor or an all-in-one? Well that's a really good question and I know not everyone feels comfortable building their own PC but to get the best bang for your buck you need to build your own I would suggest buying a sort of mid-range around about the sort of 70 to 100 pound case and that way you're going to get a very good case to base your PC on and then just specify the best motherboard, processor, hard drive, memory that you can afford to put in there um, you can get motherboards with built-in graphics to save you a bit of money to start off with and then you can always add a graphics card later on and that should bring you in under that £700 mark for a, a very good specification PC actually. So thanks very much for that question. The next question comes from uh, Rav07 and I've been in touch with Rav for a long time, very good friend. Hi Dave, how do you think the new BlackBerry Playbook will fare against the iPad? Well I did a video about the BlackBerry Playbook I actually called it the Playpad because I keep getting mixed up with all these various tablet devices that are coming out. I think the BlackBerry Playbook will do very well. Uh, BlackBerry has obviously got a lot of users already and I think that this tablet device, device will actually uh, entice a lot of business users into it that haven't quite bought into the idea of the iPad. It's a smaller device, a lot more portable. The only thing I would say is BlackBerry haven't given us a date for the playbook they've only said it's going to be in 2011 and if you bear in mind that by then 
Apple will have launched the iPad 2 or should have at least come out with a second revision of it. And I think when Apple do the iPad 2, they will offer two different sizes. I think you will get the option of a 7-inch version as well. So I think it'll do well. I do think they're certainly going to be playing catch-up again, as everyone has been trying to catch up with the iPhone. Uh, a lot of manufacturers are now going to be trying to catch up with the iPad as well. So great question. Thanks very much for that. Uh, next one is PC Gamer Guy. Can you recommend a good HD video camera that's not too expensive with an external mic jack? Well, good and cheap don't normally mix. Uh, there is a Kodak ZI8, which is around about the £130 mark, which is one of these handheld uh, pocket HD camcorders, and that has an external mic, and it's got some good optics on it as well. People have said it's very good at close-up shots, so that's one to maybe look at. And if you can afford to spend a bit more, then I can do nothing other than recommend my current camcorder, which is that Panasonic SD700. Actually, I'll give you a look at it now. This is my Panasonic SD700, and it has, um, I don't even know where it is, on this front portion here, it's got an external mic jack under there. I find the built-in mic is perfectly adequate, but if you do need an external mic, and I have tried one on here, um, then I, I, I actually tested an audio tech Technica mic on here that mounted onto this top shoe um, and it did improve the sound quality so you can add an external mic to something like that. That's going to cost you round about uh, sort of £600 mark for something like that. Next question is from uh, da -da 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 -da, let's go all the way up to the top uh, from Jamie Smith TV Hi Dave, I have a few questions about the partner programme when people click on the ads around your video, does the money go straight into your bank account or do you receive a cheque? Could you explain it in the next Q&A? Thanks, Jamie. Well, Jamie, I get a lot of questions about the YouTube Partner Programme. The best resource for information is YouTube Partner Support, and that gives you all the details about how it works. But to give you a rough idea on payments, you don't get paid every time somebody clicks um, or every time somebody views an ad, you get paid monthly um, in arrears and they normally set a cut-off day for me it's around about the 15th of the month and then you get paid for the 30 days prior to that 15th of the month and you get paid that at the end of the month that you're in so you end up waiting around about 45 days before you get payment in America I think you can choose from either having a check or payment direct into your bank account if you're in the UK you get the option of direct into your bank account only. I don't think you can opt for cheque payment. I might be wrong, but I certainly have mine going direct into the account. And after they've made the payment at the end of the month, it normally takes two or three days to show there. So, great question, and um, thank you very much for asking it. These are all of the questions that were posted on the YouTube video on the 28th of September. So I'm now going to cover off the Q&A uh, questions I received via my iPhone app. And the first one comes from uh, Jordan, and he asks, how much altogether did I spend on my PC build series? Well, for those of you that haven't seen it, there is a PC build series on the Geek Noise channel where I built a PC computer uh, running Windows 7 from start to finish. And I think the complete cost of the build was around about the £1,300 mark. I did also specify in a couple of the videos how you could reduce that cost and get it down to under a thousand pounds for a really good specification PC. So, great question. Thanks for that, Jordan. Next one is from Richard. Hi there, Dave. Can you please tell me what the difference is between 1080i and 1080p when talking about HD? 1080i, the I stands for interlaced. P stands for progressive. You have to excuse me, maybe not using the right terminology in this, but the way I understand it is interlaced means that the screen you're looking at produces lines across the screen uh, so it would produce 540 lines and then it would switch to the other 540 and it would do that uh, sort of 25 or 30 frames per second depending on what format you're looking in and then those lines because they're changing so quickly or refreshing so quickly on your screen uh, look like they're one image with 1080p it shows you all of the lines in one go so it's not interlaced, it's, it's all, all on the screen at the same time. So for those of you who 
can really pick out on high quality displays to the eye, it should look a lot crisper and contain a lot more detail. I hope I explained that right. Um, I'm not great at that terminology on, on those, but that, that's the way I understand it. Obviously, 1080p being the, the higher quality. So if you're looking for an HD TV and you've got the choice between 1080i or 1080p, if you can afford it and prices are coming down a lot, go for the 1080p version. Next question is, what TV do I have? And if you could, would you upgrade to a new 3D TV uh, on the market? And that's from James. Well, James, that question is very relevant to the one I actually answered a minute ago. My TV is a Samsung 40-inch TV. It's, I think it's a Series 2 or 3, so it's quite an old one. It's actually a 1080i TV, so it uses that interlaced image. Um, still perfectly happy with it. I will upgrade eventually. And when I do upgrade, will I buy a 3D TV? Well, I have reviewed one. Uh, I reviewed the Samsung 55-inch, and it's a fantastic TV. Am I convinced? Probably not 100% convinced that I want to sit there watching 3D TV. So I would probably just buy the best 1080p LED backlit TV that I could afford. And it would probably be a Panasonic one because I really like some of their current range. So again, great question. Thank you very much for that, James. And the next one is from Kenta. Now I'm not sure if this is a joke question, but I will treat it as a proper question. I have five large fish tanks at home with many fishes and turtles. Do you have any pets? Are you interested in any? I believe that technology of fish tanks are pretty remarkable. Well, Kenta, uh, if this is a serious question, which I'm sure it is, so forgive me for uh, doubting it. Do I have any pets? Well, I don't have any pets at the moment, but we are looking at getting a small dog, either a chihuahua or a Bichon Friss, I think you pronounce it like that, which is a small dog. Um, we want one really just to enjoy as a family, so so yes, uh, I am looking into getting a pet, but don't have one at the moment. I just hope that when I get it, it doesn't chew through all of the wires on my technology, otherwise I won't be able to be bringing you these tech Q&A videos so regularly. Next question is from Jordan. And he's asking, can I please do a review of the Apple TV because he's not sure whether to get it. Well, I did actually get my uh, delivery of my Apple TV yesterday, so you should already see on the channel uh, an actual unboxing and product tour of it. And in about three or four days, maybe a little bit sooner, I'll bring you a full review of the product. So great timing on that question, and you should see the review on the channel very soon. Next question is from Sean. There's actually two questions here. Uh, hey Dave, why don't you update your podcast on iTunes and have you ever thought of getting someone to upload your videos for you so that you have more time to do reviews? Well, Sean, uh, the podcast or the videos that I put on iTunes, uh, time consuming to do them as well as the YouTube videos and it's something I've looked at. I've considered doing a podcast again. Uh, the trouble I've got is just time. Uh, with regards to getting somebody to help me, I would love to be able to, but people want paying, and I don't really have the funds to, to pay anyone to sit in front of the computer and upload videos for me. So for the time being, no, but certainly in the future, I would like to start putting stuff up on iTunes again. Next question, again from Sean, is, uh, has this scenario ever happened where I'm doing a video and halfway through your son or daughter comes home and you have to stop the video halfway through and then redo the video. Happens to me all the time, not necessarily with family members because I do a lot of my video recording uh, during the day when they're out at school and when my wife's at work. But certainly I get interrupted by the phone going, by deliveries coming and it is very frustrating because sometimes I forget where I'm up to in the video and a lot of the time it's easier to just start from the beginning again rather than try and edit something in halfway through. Sometimes when you see me break off halfway through in the questions and answers, answer sessions, that is because I've had to go and uh, sign in a, a delivery of a review product or something like that. So yeah, I do get a lot of interruptions. It would be nice just to be able to shut myself away in an office somewhere and get all of my videos done uninterrupted. So two great questions. Thanks very much for that, Sean. And the last question for this Q&A session is from Billy. Um, 
I am going to buy my sisters an iPod Touch 4G, 4G each for their birthdays. Lucky sisters. They will be using the same PC to sync the iPods and I was wondering if I buy them some apps and music etc do I have to buy the stuff twice or can I sync it to both iPods? Uh, they do have iPod shuffles now on iTunes and I'll be following on from those profiles. Great question uh, Billy. That is a very relevant question because in my family I've got an iPod Touch, my son and daughter has as well. We all share the same iTunes library so if my son buys an app it gets uh, transferred onto the Mac and then I can put it on my daughter's iPod or on mine and vice versa so you can share apps. I think the actual terms and conditions that Apple lay down is you can put a purchase on up to five devices so up to five iPod touches for example can all have the apps purchased just once and then shared with those five devices. Um, when you're synchronizing the device you just put little tick boxes in what you want to synchronize with that particular device. You don't have to have all of the apps on all of the devices. Uh, you can pick and choose what you want to synchronize across. So really good question. Thank you to everyone for their questions for this Q&A session. Just to let you all know there won't be a Q&A session video next week because I'm too busy doing video reviews but there will be another one on Tuesday the 19th of October. So thanks again for everyone who's posted their questions. Keep them coming in the comments and send me emails or questions or obviously send them through the iPhone application and I will answer as many as I can. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.